Right, okay then. So, welcome to the Northeast Updates YouTube channel. And today we're going to look at the Premier League season. This should be noted that we are still a few hours into the transfer window. Um, so, there will be some signings made that will affect the decisions. But we're going to look at the end of season awards, first of all, where we're going to discuss Golden Boot winner, biggest bargain of the transfer window, and so on. And then later on, we are going to look at who we both predict in the top 20 Premier League places this season. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe and comment on almost all of these questions. We're very interested to see who you would have as relegation candidates, the winners of the league and so on. So my name's Chris from Northeast Updates and this is also Lewis from Northeast Updates. Hello. <laughs> okay, and we'll just jump straight right in. Yep. Golden Boot. Now this, uh, this has just come off the back of Holland getting his second hat trick of the season. Is this a kind of days. easy choice, or, or who who have you got for your Golden Boot? I mean, if we're talking before the season started, I would have said Salah, Holland are the two that will be fighting for the whole season. But now, after Holland's performance yesterday. And his start to the season, and with players like De Bruyne and Bernardo Silva and Mares and Foden playing around him, I think Haaland could win the Golden Boot and even break Sal's 32-goal record. Yeah, like I that. mean, I can't exactly argue with that. I'll be totally honest, I did have Haaland in as the goal scorer, uh, the Golden Boot winner, rather, before ball was kicked. I thought him being the main striker yeah. of Man City, his pedigree... Provided he could hit the ground running, I thought it could be a real top season. Um, he's not really surprised us massively. Uh, two hat-tricks already. It looks like there's going to be more of that. He knows where to be. Yeah, that's right. Uh, and it looks like there's going to be just more and more records broke, like you say, all throughout the season. It, it's frightening. As long as he gets the minutes and he's not really a victim of pet roulette, I, I can't see him yeah. going to, to anyone else. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Perfect. So next category we've got is the top three transfers. Now, like I mentioned before, the window is still open. I think really the only big transfer that's being mooted at the minute is a Bamiyang to Chelsea. So that's possibly the only thing that could change it. So we're going to look yep. at where top three. Um, I'll jump right in first and I've got number one. Has to be Haaland, uh, especially given the price. Uh, it's a total bargain. I, I don't see you know, how, how he's not in anyone's top three. Yeah, I completely agree with you. He was my first choice, best sign of the um, um, transfer window. It could have gone differently if maybe the likes of Nunes hadn't decided to headbutt someone in his first game. But yeah, Haaland has just been unbelievable, so there's no point saying anyone else but him. Yeah, so then we get into the, the juicier stuff. So who's going to be number two and three? So for number two, I've went for Jesus. Now, Ooh. this is kind of the Haaland oh, replacement. A little bit of a surprise. There's obviously a lot to choose from. Um, mm. I think he has hit the ground run. He's, he's exceeded my expectation a little bit. He's kind of shown what he can do as a central striker, given a run of games. He was never really going to get that at City. Uh, and he's looking very promising. Uh, a yep. little bit surprised that they let him go. Um, who, who have you got for number two? I've got the same as you, Jesus. I mean, what a start he had of the season. He was showing signs of of being a great striker in pre-season even. I remember scoring goals um, during the summer and he's just going to make that Arsenal side better with Odegaard and stuff around him. So yeah, Jesus is definitely, I think it was around 45 million Arsenal got him for and yeah. he's already scored goals. So what more could you ask for? Exactly. And uh, number three then, who have you got for your number three? I've got Sterling as my number three. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've, I've got exactly the same. <laughs> I think we've got the same top three then. Yeah. Um, I mean, Sterling, yeah, like Jesus, he's going to completely change that Chelsea team and he adds Premier League titles and what he done for City. He scored goals and he played games. He's back living in London where he's from and, yeah, I can just see him getting better and better for them. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's already chipped in with a few goals already, uh, yeah. vital goals. Um, I was a little bit surprised Man City got rid of him, in truth. I know Grealish hasn't really yeah. lived up to the, the hype so far, hasn't settled in properly. Um, so it was a little bit of a surprise. I mean, the, there was obviously a few more that we could have picked for this category. Uh, Zinchenko, yeah. Nunes, like I you had, mentioned. I had the, Zinchenko, I had Cucurella, Richardson, Isaac, Casemiro, Nunes were other potential picks. 
Yeah, I mean, I think with Nunes, I think he's he's obviously very very young. The the jury yeah. is still a little bit out to see what he's like in the Premier League. Whether he he, he will get sent off again because now obviously defenders know can rattle yeah. him up, maybe get a, yeah. a red card out of him. It, we'll, we'll see with that one. Maybe at the end of the season we'll look back. And... Yep, it could be completely different at the end exactly. of the season. <laughs> right, so then we're going to look at it. So to see who has the best transfer window this transfer window. Do you want to go first for this one or do you want me to jump in? You go first. Nottingham Forest, I've put. Um, I can't believe they're spending as much as they have. Obviously, financial fair play has to be coming in at some point. It looked like there was days throughout this transfer window where you were just thinking it's going to be another signing today, tomorrow and the next day. It's a very much experimental kind of thing. I know Fulham were a little bit like that. Uh, where they bought a ton of players in. It didn't really work for them. Um, but Nottingham Forest, I think all things considered, you know, you could pick Chelsea, you could maybe pick some others. I think really Nottingham Forest are the ones for a newly promoted club to, to yeah. have the best transfer window. Forest were in my mind, but the reason I didn't go for them is I have memories of Fulham a couple of seasons ago doing the exact same thing, getting promoted, getting rid of all their players that got them promoted and then ultimately getting relegated at the end of the season. It could end up that way. It could be different. But, I mean, yeah, some of the signings Forrest have made are like Lodi from Atletico Madrid, Lingard, um, Freuler from Atlanta, I think it was. But I've decided to go for Spurs for the best transfer window in my eyes. I think Richarlison, Basuma, Perisic, um, Jed Spence from Forrest and even Longley um, on loan from Barcelona, I think, are all going to make them better. And they needed that extra attacking player to add depth with Son, Kulzewski, Kane, and I think they've done that. And I can see them really challenging this season. Yeah, I, I can't exactly disagree. It's, it's, a, it's a great show. They're definitely mm. backing the manager. Um, yep, big signings. He's obviously got the pulling power. He can attract the big players and stuff. It, it could be a big season, but we can obviously touch on that when we do the, the Premier League reveal yep. as well to see where Tottenham plays in. Um if, if you guys who are watching, if you disagree, agree, let us know who you think as well. Um, for the worst club, this transfer window. Now, like we've said a couple of times now, the window is still open. I've got Leicester down here, but Ooh. obviously they've just, so for yeah, Fauna, they've I've got a big that. amount of money. Yeah, it's a case of I can't imagine them just sitting on that and not doing anything. Um, I, I have been a little bit disappointed with them. Um, I... They, they've obviously sold for Fauna, one of their best players. Tillemans, uh, I know his contract's obviously running out. It looks like he's not going to sign. So if he doesn't go this window in January, what real fee are they going to get? The the Schmeichel is another one. Um, I, I, there's not really much coming in the club. Yeah. It, I'm really shocked with, you know, considering they have so much potential in that squad, they've just not really had a good window at all. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I had Leicester down couple of hours ago until a notification popped up on my phone that said Leicester have signed their first outfield player. So I think that might lead on to further things because it is deadline day today, obviously. Yeah. But my pick, I went for, I went for um, Bournemouth. I just think they haven't, they've signed um, Tavernier from Middlesbrough and Neto from Barcelona on a free. But apart from that, they needed to add Premier League experienced players to keep them up. And they just haven't done that. So, yeah, Bournemouth are my pick for a bit of a dodgy transfer window. Yeah, well, you need to be careful saying that out loud because we know the owners aren't very happy with people saying that <laughs> yeah. out loud. With the second. Um, next one is the breakout star of the season. Now, I've, this is the one that I've probably had the most difficulties tossing and turning with. Um, I've went for Sven Botman. Um, I know it's not necessarily fashionable, given a, a breakout start to a central defender. But I've looked at his stats at the start of the season. Um, in particular, what Eddie Howe's doing as well at Newcastle. Uh, I think he he could really be transformed and be a real breakout star. I think he could be a top top four, top six style player um, by yeah. the end of this season. Yeah, I agree. Um, I went for Harvey Elliott at Liverpool. I think with the likes of other midfielders such as Thiago and Kaida um, and Klopp's team getting injured. This is left, there's left a, a space for Elliot in that three in midfield for Liverpool. 
And last night against Newcastle, he was exceptional, probably one of the best players on the pitch. And I think he's only 19, 20 years of age and he can only get better, especially under a manager like Klopp. So, yeah, I think Elliot's in for a really good season this season if, if he doesn't get injured. Yeah, and I mean, that there's question marks in the Liverpool midfield at the moment of are they yeah. going to go in the transfer market and get one? If they don't, it's obviously only going to be beneficial for them. Yeah, well, yeah I agree. That leads us on to the next one then in terms of the young player of the year. So for this yep. one, again, that there, there could be a few. Um, mm-hmm. I've went for Anthony Gordon. Um, I know Ooh, Everton, yeah. they've sold Richarlison. They're, they're going to be lacking goals and the assist that he brings. Gordon's going to get that game time um, that maybe mm. not everyone his age is going to get in the Premier League. Uh, I am quite excited to see what he does. I'm very surprised that Everton actually kept a hold of him given there was a £60 million bid, I think that's a very inflated uh, price tag for him. Um, mm. It's obviously, it would be a massive surprise now if he was to go in the last few hours of the window. But I, I think really given his game time that he's going to get this season and the fact that he's going to be pushed up front, um, he's going to have a lot of pressure on his shoulders. I think this really could be his breakout, his full breakout season. Yeah, um, I've gone for Saka at Arsenal for my young player of the season. I think this Arsenal team looks very scary at the minute and haven't seen their uh, all or nothing documentary on Amazon Prime. It seems like there's a big unity and togetherness in that Arsenal team. Um, and playing alongside Jesus, Martinelli, Odegaard, it's just a young team that just are on the up. So yeah, I think Saka's in for a good season. Yeah, I, I think it's a it's a big season for him as, as, as well as the, yeah. the club as a whole. Very exciting times. Um, the next one is the worst signing transfer wise. So, do you want to go first with this one? Yeah, I did struggle with this one a wee bit. I've actually went for Morgan Gibbs White, at who signed for Nottingham Forest. Good player, don't get me wrong, but I just don't think the price tag you'll get enough from him for what I think they paid close to thirty million for him. Um, it's it's apparently 42 because very 42, funny enough, I've yeah, actually picked the same player. <laughs> we're oh, we're yeah, not really? copying off each other, we didn't see each other's yeah, answers before this. I haven't but... seen, no. mm-hmm. For me, the, the reason I've got him down is purely for the price tag. I don't think he's a bad player, yeah. I don't think he's going to come good, but I think it's a very, very inflated price tag. I know All they right. got a, re- a replacement in straight away for around the same price was. But if, if it does go to full valuation, it's £42 million for someone who wasn't even a guaranteed starter before this yeah. for the Premier League. It's, it's, it's too much, in my opinion. But, you know, it wouldn't be a massive surprise if he did come good and we're eating more words at the end of the yeah. season. Yeah, he could have a really good season at the end of the day. But I just think up front, £42 million for a player that's not even proven in the Premier League yet is a wee bit too high in my eyes. Yeah, I'd, I'd agree. Uh, okay. So, player of the season. Um, it's hard to predict this early in the season, but who have you gone for for the player of this season? I've gone for Kevin De Bruyne. I just think having Haaland in front of him this, um, this season, his assists are just going to get more and more and more. I think he's a real, real, real good footballer, one of, one of the best midfielders in the world. And, yeah, I think he's going to help that City team win the league again and maybe even the Champions League. Yeah, I mean, for me, I'm going to have to be boring and go for the, the obvious choice of Haaland. Um, mm-hmm. He's, you know, he's in a league of his own. Uh, the fact that he's that good of a player and being dropped into the Man City squad is, it's it's almost a cheat code. It's it's just Sorry. totally unfair <laughs> on the league. Um, yeah. So yeah, for, for me, it, it has to be Haaland. Uh, the, the next category that we've got is the biggest bargain. So this isn't necessarily... Who's the best transfer? It's for the price. Who's the best? So who, who have you gone for for that? Um, I went for a free transfer, Perisic, who signed for Spurs from Inter Milan. I think he's exactly who Conte um, wanted for that left wing back role. And he's, um, he used him to win the, um, the, win the Serie A with Inter Milan. Yep. He's, a, he's a perfect fullback and done the, I think he'll do the exact same job for Spurs as what he did for Inter Milan. Yeah, so, I yeah. can't argue. I mean, he's he's already doing really well on fantasy football with his assists, clean assist, sheets yeah. play for Tottenham. Um, for me, I went for Christian Eriksen. Again, another free. Mm. Um, the fact that they've picked him up, it, for, it was bizarre to me why there was not 
a ton more interest in him. It no seemed else, like it was yeah. only Brentford and Man U who were in. He'd, he'd proven his worth last season at Brentford when he got a chance. He looks a fantastic player for the, the few games that he started for, for Man U this season. He's, he's looked great. I think for a free, obviously you've mentioned the other great free as well. Um, you know, that there are some good bargains out there, but I mean, you have to really look at the free market. And I think Christian Eriksson on a free is just unreal. Um, likewise, yeah. your choice as well. There was obviously some other bargains as well. Nick Pope for, for 10 million, obviously, um, and some others. But yeah, that's mm-hmm. sensible for them too. Yep, I agree. Yep. Okay, so flop of the season, um, transfer flop. Who have you got down for that one? Um, I've went for Calvin Phillips at Man City. I just think they didn't really need to sign him and they could have went for someone different. Although he is a um, good player at England at the Rational, I just I don't see him get much game time for City. So Yeah, yeah hard, to, hard to argue. They've, they've signed him for a bench. Um, I've gone for Martinez at Manchester United. Uh, I really think he's going to struggle with his height and, and for that reason, uh, I think it'll be him, fortunately. Yeah. Perfect. Um, so... We'll dive into the, the Premier League table now. So we'll start yep. off at the top. So who have you got down winning Ooh. the Premier League this season? Uh, I think it's between two, and we all know who the two are, but I've gone for Man City to win the league. Just Haaland, De Bruyne, I think they look unbelievable at the minute, and I don't see there being many issues for them this season. Yeah. So, yeah. Did did you have Man City down before the start of the season, or has as your as your view kind of changed as the the season's gone on? I've I was debating Liverpool City, but then seeing the start. Don't get me wrong, Liverpool could go on a, a um, streak of twenty games that they win in a row from now. But I just think Man City just they do look unbelievable, and even the young guy Alvarez, who's just signed for them, scored two yesterday against Forest. Howland back to back hat tricks. I mean. You can't really go against that, to be honest. No, again, I think it's 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 probably not going to be best odds for back in Man City to win the title this season. Um, yeah. I mean, you you look at who they signed. You have we haven't even mentioned Calvin Phillips. He's he's a full England yeah. international. And he's on the bench. He, exactly, they've paid all that money. And we've got a superstar him. just to sit on the bench. It just shows you the gulf in quality. I, I think it's only going to get bigger for. For Man City, I, I really yep. do. I think they've, they've just got money to burn and it's yep. going to take an awful lot and it's going to take either a lot of injuries for City or a real heck of a performance from Liverpool, Tottenham, Arsenal, anyone like that to, to really catch them up. I, I just think the gulf is is huge at the moment. Yeah, I completely agree with you. Man yep. City to win it. I mean, so the next the next question, we we'll probably don't even need to go into it in truth. It's, it's only a two two league team, really. It seems maybe, maybe you know, it might be wrong. Yeah. But have you got Liverpool down as well? Yeah, I have Liverpool in second. I mean, a pr- pretty bad start, but maybe not bad, not as good as I'm sure some of the fans hope so. But again, they have that potential to get back um, young players like Elliot and Carvalho in the team. Um, Nunes coming back from the suspension. I think I really think from now on they're just going to fire ahead and they'll be chasing Man City the whole season. But I think it'll be interesting to see what they can do. Yeah, I, th- I think very interesting. I, I mean... <sighs> I don't know how the best way to phrase this is. I, I would probably say this season's a, a one step back to take two steps forward. They've getting rid of Mane, who was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, some people will say he's better than Salah. He's he's one of the best players in the league. I'd, I'd put him on par with Son, um, his sort of impact. They've, they've replaced him with youth. They've went with Nunes. Obviously, you've mentioned Cavalli mm. and stuff. I think... Getting rid of someone who's in the, the over 30 bracket and getting younger people in is more of a long-term view. So I think yeah. this season, they the might struggle to, to replicate what they did last with them, but they, they've secured a, a bit of a better long-term future for them. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the first two. That's the obvious two out the way with them. Yep. So now we go into the rest of the top four. So we'll do this one by one. Who have okay. you got for your number three finish? The same team who I think have had a good transfer window. I went for Spurs in third. Um, I just think Antonio Conte, again, is one of the best managers in the league. Perisic, Basuma, Richardson all coming into the squad. Already a front three that was firing last season. Kolzewski looks great. The Champions League group isn't too hard. They've got Frankfurt, Marseille and Sporting Lisbon. So I don't think that will have a major effect on their season. And yeah, Brand new stadium was a billion pound stadium. I think you're just gonna, yeah, third place for Spurs in my eyes. 
Yeah, I mean, we're we're reading each other's minds a little bit here because I've got exactly the same. Yeah. Um, I, I was I was split a little bit potentially going with with Arsenal. Um, yep. but I think that the signings, the manager, all, all they really need to do to to get top three, I think, is to keep everyone fit. I think. Yeah. They've been lucky in recent seasons. I mean, I, if if memory serves us right, I think Kane picked up a bad injury right before the whole COVID thing happened. That mm-hmm. would have absolutely destroyed their season. They are heavily reliant on Kane. I know they've now maybe got a Son replacement with Richarlison, but I think Kane is their their big one. Like anyone, every single team's got their big stars that if, if they had an injury would would be damaging. But I think as long as they can keep Kane and Son fit, yeah, I yeah. think a third finish is... And Kane's already started scoring goals already, and he's right into it, so yeah. Yeah. Okay, so number four, I've, I've got Arsenal. This was obviously what yep. I was split between three and four. Everything you mentioned before, the, for me, they've got a fantastic manager. Um, he's obviously used his connections at Man City, fetched a few in from, from Man City. Having watched the documentary as well, I, I've been impressed with what he's doing, with everything there. Yeah, um, same here. I, I mean, realistically, it, it's easy to look back at something. When Obama Yang was you know, thrown out of the club a little bit because of his attitude, if that had went the wrong way it could have probably been a different yeah. conversation and everyone would have been against him and saying how, you know, making terrible decisions. Um, the the board, he seems to have a good relationship with them. The, he's been backed again. Mm-hmm. Um, third or fourth, it, it wouldn't be a massive surprise. Um, I've been impressed with yeah. the, the signings they're making. Um, Jesus is obviously hitting the ground running. I think they're signing the at the back. today. Yeah. Oh, have they? Martin Villa. I think they're signing them today, yeah. I saw something about 14, 15 million, which again is another good player to have in your squad. The, the only thing I'll say with Arsenal is um, the Europa League, they've got Bodo Glimt, Zurich and PSV in their group and that could, the away trips long on Thursday nights could affect them. But yeah, I mean, Jesus Sinchenko have got it in the side and really improved that. I think our dad is a great manager. So yeah, four yeah. wins from four, you cannot ask for much more than that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the next position, fifth, then. Um, I've got Chelsea. Um, Chelsea. I, it does seem like they've still got a little bit of money to spend. The the defence, I mean, it's still early in the season. Form kind of comes into a little bit. Players are gelling, but the defence has looked a little bit shaky. They're conceding a lot of bad goals that really, mm. for a club like Chelsea, they would never normally have historically done. Um New owners have come in. Obviously, there was the whole controversy with the the whole selling. Um, they're, they're putting their money where the mouse is. They've they've signed some great players. They've signed the Brighton left back, uh, Raheem Sterling. Yep. Um, great central defenders as well. Kulabali, so, Fufana. Yeah, and Fufana as well. Yeah, they let Werner go. They let Lukaku go. Um, I I think they might struggle for goals, but this yep. is saying this now. I know obviously that they're, they're due to probably sign a Bamiyang. If that comes off. That might change it. Maybe they will get a top four finish with his goals. Um, who who have you got? I went for Chelsea as well. I think some of the signings, as you said, they've made have been um, great. Kukurela, Fofana, Kulabali, but I just don't think they have. They tried it with Lukaku. They thought he would be the man to come in and get them goals, but it just didn't work out. And I don't think Havertz up front is going to get you many goals in a, in a Premier League season. So I think they might struggle. I mean, they look awful against Leeds. Um, 3-0 away at Leeds is not a great result. And then last night, losing 2-1 to Southampton. I mean, yeah, I just I think they could be in trouble this season. But again, we'll see. Sterling could lift them up. Yeah. Well, sixth place. Um, I've went for Manchester United. Yeah. Yeah, you've gone for the city. Yeah, I mean, it it's... It's probably a bad finish for Man, Man United fans. I know that so far this season, it's, it's already a short season, that there's been fan protests. That they're, they're not happy with the, the board. I don't see why. I, I can kind of see why. But, I mean, that they're, they're spending, the, the owners are spending yet again. They, if you remember at the start of last season, the signings they made last season, Sancho, Ronaldo, Varane, everyone had kind of expected them to do really well. Again, yeah. this transfer window, they've spent big. They've probably overspent on a few, in my opinion, but time will Definitely. tell. Um, I've put my new as six. Uh, I would probably, in truth, be more surprised if they finished higher than sixth than below yeah. sixth. I really think someone, you know, one of the, 
the best of the rest sort of thing could finish higher than them, it wouldn't be a massive surprise to me. Yeah. I mean, Eric Ten Hag seems to be a great manager, but he hasn't been backed by the board. I mean, how long were we talking about Frankie de Jong to Manchester United for? It seems like it was going on for two or three months and it never happened and I don't think it will happen. Martinez, Anthony, good signings, but again... Um, I still don't think the squad overall is good enough, and they're in the they're in the Europa League this season. That could have an effect on them. It could be worse than sixth. It could be seventh or eighth. You know. Yeah, exactly. So now we look at best of the rest. Then, so we've got the mm-hmm. normal, traditional top six all sorted. Then in the right orders, who do you, who have you got down for seventh place? Seventh was a tussle between. West Ham and Newcastle for me, but I've gone for Newcastle in seventh place. Yep. Just for you, that one. I mean, the the home fans, everything about them, signings, Isaac, Botman, Pope, the 3-3 three, three against City, what a game that was. The only thing that may halt them a wee bit this season is injuries to St. Maximum, Wilson, etc. But I think, I think Newcastle can beat anyone in that league at home. It's in James's Park, and I think that's shown already. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, I've got new again. I've got I've got the same. I've got same, Newcastle same down. Top I, down. <laughs> slightly biased, but yeah, I, I, yeah. I do, I, I do only foresee a good thing. Like you say, injuries could play a part. They already have started to play a little part. I know Trippier was having a little bit of injury doubt. Saint Maximin, Callum Wilson, which you know, as as much as I love him and he's great, it, it is a ticking time bomb. With him. everyone kind of knows he's he's one of these unfortunate players who who do pick up a lot of knocks and stuff. Um. However, saying that, especially while we're just talking about Callum Wilson, the new signing they've got up front, that Isaac. Oh, he very looks brief, good. Only, only seen him once in a Newcastle shirt. It's you know you, we can look all we want in YouTube and and where he's played elsewhere, but really seeing in the Premier League what he can do is a real testament. And yesterday, going against one of the best in the league, Liverpool, his composure yeah. in front of goal was fantastic. I know one of the goals was offside. Oh, finishes but- were. Yeah, he, he looks a real, yeah. real player. And I think he'd be a real handful uh, for all of the Premier League teams. Um, for, for Newcastle, now this might just be me personally, because if you ask any Newcastle fan, you've got unrealistic expectations all the way down to very realistic expectations. I had thought the club might spend a little bit more. I know in the last transfer window, Newcastle were always going to struggle. we near in the relegation zone. Um, struggling to get people in from other clubs, any sort of decent players was always going to be tricky. I thought they would use a lot of budget this window, but saying that every single signing they've made is fantastic. You can't be anything other than impressed. Just to kind of go through them, you've got you've got Nick Pope. I mean, that is an absolute bargain and possibly one of the bargain uh, transfer of of, yep. of this of this Agreed. summer. Um, Ten million. He's played in nets for England. Uh, you've also got Taggart who. Last season, obviously impressed with while he's at Newcastle. Another bargain fee, 15 million for a proven, decent Premier League left back. Um, you've got Botman, who obviously I mentioned before, absolutely incredible start. He looks fantastic. The new striker, uh, I think it'll be a fantastic season for Newcastle. Obviously, the other clubs that we're going to look at, maybe West Ham, the rest of them, the, the European football could play a part. And I think Newcastle could sneak it against them purely because they don't have European football as well, playing twice a week. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think um, with Newcastle, Eddie Howe, he only signs, he only gets players who he really wants. He doesn't like to just add them for the numbers and the, the value to get the fans excited. He goes out for players who he wants to sign. And I think that's just going to keep coming season after season for Newcastle. And, Things are just going to keep getting better in my eyes. A hundred percent. I mean, if if you if you even just look at what he's done with the players that he's got, Almiron, um, yeah. Fraser, loads of people who are exceeding their own kind of levels, in my opinion. So yeah. yeah, fantastic manager, fantastic atmosphere in the ground, money to spend, new owners backing them. O- only one way, and I, I think yeah, seventh seventh is is probably going to be a shock to some Newcastle fans who are maybe hoping for just top ten. I think really a, a good season in seventh for Newcastle. Yeah, if they keep injuries. Yeah. If they so keep their fit, yeah. Number eight, I know you mentioned before this, you might have spoiled it a little bit because you, you said yeah. possibly Newcastle or West Ham. So I presume you got West Ham as well, number eight? Yeah, I've got West Ham and eight, yeah. Um, with them, I mean, they've made some good signings. They haven't had a great start to the season. I mean, the first game of City, I mean, uh, most people are going to lose to City this season. Then they went to Forest, lost, then they uh, hosted Brighton. 
lost. They've picked up points against West Ham and recently um, drew to Spurs. So I think I think West Ham will just get better. I mean, Cornet from Burnley is a great signing. Oh, yeah. from Leon, who Newcastle really wanted as well. Great signing. Another thing with them, like United, I think they might struggle because they're in the Conference League this season and some of the away days might have an effect on them. But yeah, they've a good manager and they've made some good signings. So I think they'll be all, they'll be all right. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't disagree with you. I've, I've worked for Crystal Palace. Um, Vieira's really, really impressed me this season. Um, I think, obviously, the transfer window's still open. Uh, I've, I've been trying to keep up to date and see what, what's coming in. I really think if he was given a bit of money here in this transfer window, it could be a great season for them. Um, Zaha, he's got him playing fantastic. Uh, they look solid at the back. They're actually an exciting team to watch as well. As a neutral, this the they've gone from someone I wouldn't normally watch a full match with them to, you know, being on the radar massively. I'm yeah. very excited to see what Vieira can do uh, with with Crystal Palace. Yeah, um, I completely agree with you. Palace aren't too far um, next on my list. So, what yeah. position are we on to next? Uh, uh, so next they'll be ninth. So who have you got ninth. down for ninth then? I have Brighton in ninth. I just think Graham Potter is one of the best managers in that league. He could be the next thing to manager. Um, they've had a great start. They beat United at Old Trafford. They beat West Ham away from home as well. Beat Leeds, drew with Newcastle. They got beat 2-1 by Fulham, which is a bit of a weird one. But then I just think they've got a really good, experienced, talented squad, the likes of Lalana, Gross. And yeah, I think they'll have a good season. Yeah, so I've, I've gone for West Ham, um, kind of for very similar reasons to yourself, uh, a no-brainer. They are kind of one of the best of the rest. Um, I, I really think that it'll be a good season for them. Uh, Europe might be a bit of a distraction, but definitely a top 10 finish, I would say, for them, definitely. Um, yep. Speaking of top 10, uh, who's the final choice in your top 10? Uh, someone you've already picked, that's Crystal Palace. I think similar reasons, as you've said, they have a great manager and Patrick Vieira, the likes of Zaha, Alessia, I think you pronounce it, Eze, Edward, all look to be really dangerous this season. And you've got to realise they've already been to Anfield and the Etihad. They could have won at Anfield and they could have beat Man City. They went 2-0 up. Um, so they've got the horror games out of the way and I think Palace, yeah, they, they they look good, and I think a top ten finish for them will they'll be happy with. Yeah, I mean, I, I think by the sounds of it, we've also got a lot of the same top ten placements as well. My my number yeah. tenth place uh, is Brighton. Um, now mm-hmm. with Brighton, be, this is one of the ones I think that has changed for me before the start of the season to now. I did worry a little bit for them. I've seen them selling a lot of their stars. They, they remind us a little bit like Southampton what they used to be anyway, where mm-hmm. they would sell the best player and you wouldn't even notice the next season. Then again, they would sell yeah. one of the best players and you wouldn't even notice. But it's a case of how long really can you keep doing that? I think that, like you say, they've got a great manager, um, great infrastructure. I know Newcastle's taken a lot of their higher ups. Um, they've, yep. they've let This transfer window alone, they've lost their star left back, who I think is absolutely fantastic. Uh, Basuma went to Tottenham. I think he, he, he on paper, should be a massive miss for them. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously, the I think it's Mope, I think. Mope, yeah, uh, went well. to Everton. Yeah. Um, they've, they've got Danny Welbeck up top. They really shouldn't be where they are on paper, yeah. um, given they've got no real superstar players. Um, what they've got is a real big work ethic. I, I think... The manager really should be manager. backed a little bit more because I think if yeah. he's not, and this happens in January and so on, it will just be a little decline because I think no matter how long you play good football, you, having a strategy, selling your best players and expecting the same sort of finish or, or exceeding that, it's 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 going to catch up with you eventually. Uh, but for this season, I think definitely a top 10 finish. Um, like everything mm-hmm. about them, uh, I just, it's yeah. a shame if, if they invested a little bit. I really think they could have pushed on. Yeah, they, a they could eight. really push on with a, with a bit of investment because, as I say, Graham Potter is one of the best managers in the Premier League. So, But I think top 10 is something they'll be aiming for regardless. Yeah, and it wouldn't be a surprise for me if they got it. Um, yeah. So next we'll look at the relegation, possibly the most interesting section of this. Um, mm-hmm. We'll start from the bottom. So who have you got to finish 
bottom of the Premier League season this season? I went for Bournemouth to finish last place, 20th. I mean, I had a wee bit of hope for Bournemouth at the start of the season. I think Scott Parker's a really good manager, and I'm really surprised at the fact that they've sacked him. Um, they've made some all right signings. I've met, I think I mentioned earlier Tavernier from Middlesbrough, Neto in Nets on a free. But apart from that, I mean, they looked awful at Anfield. Conceding nine goals to any team in the Premier League is, I think they're going to be in for a really tough season, and I can see them getting relegated. Yeah, they're, they're for me number 20th again, but I think really out of all the teams that I've got, they're the only ones that I really would put money on that are definitely going to yeah. get relegated. Um, obviously, sacking the manager after four games, that's not good for morale. Yeah. That's not I good for anything. Um, I mean, speaking about the sacking, it's obviously the first Premier League sacking of the season. Um it, it's got to be because of his outspoken comments. They obviously don't like to hear that sort of stuff. Yeah. They want everyone to be pushing forward because the results, even though they did have a couple of bad results, a heavy, heavy result as well with the 9-0, yeah. they'd had a horrendous start of the season in terms of fixtures. They'd played some of the yeah. best teams already. So I think they, they got a win over Aston Villa. They won the which, first game, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you're being realistic... And you know, not not all of these new Premier League clubs are. They they kind of come up with illusions of grandeur where they just think we'll not spend much money and expect to stay up if we don't we sack the manager. Um getting a win against Aston Villa and then getting some hammerings off the big boys is it it's to be expected. You've just got to go with that. So it's gotta be for the comments that he made uh, made rather. Um he is kind of right in my opinion to make them comments because it's him that looks bad at the end of the season if they go down. They've, they've really under-invested in the squad. I mean, I know they've not exactly done a Nottingham Forest or anything and just chucked, you know, yeah. boatloads. But when you get, I think it's 170 million for, you know, going into the Premier League Indeed. and you've only spent 20 million on the squad to go from a championship level to a Premier League level, you, you're basically letting the manager walk the walk the plank before the, the season's even started. So he, yeah. for me, he is kind of right. You kind of have to say something like that. Maybe he should have did it behind closed doors, but... The, the expectations by the board, uh, I don't know, baff, baffle me. Um, but ignore the manager, uh, the squad. It's it's there's a gulf in quality in the, the mm-hmm. Premier League. I know obviously there's Agreed. there's probably now three leagues in the Premier League, and there's probably a bottom six um, where relegation could you know happen to any single one of them. I really mm-hmm. think the the gulf in quality they haven't really got up to that level, and I really do think they'll finish bottom uh, bottom out of the. Promoted teams, bottom out of, of everyone. Could be bottom by quite a good bit as well. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Especially with goal difference as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so 19th then? 19th. Maybe a bit of a surprise here. I don't know how similar we'll go here. I've got Southampton in 19th. Um, what I can say about Southampton, they've had a really good start. They've beaten Chelsea 2-1. They've got good goal scorers in Armstrong and Adams. They've got a really good captain in War Prowse. But I think they're a few injuries away from having a really poor run and I think by Christmas time the squad their squad depth isn't that good um, I think that normally around November, December they start to fall off get a poor run of results and yeah as I said I think they're a war prize injury away from losing a lot of games I like Hassan Hill a wee bit but I just don't think I can't see them doing much this season to be honest yeah, I mean, I went for a surprise for 19th. Um, I mean, I say surprise. It, like I said before, it, it could be six could teams be that get relegated. Six, seven, yeah. maybe even eight teams that get relegated. Um, one of the reasons you've alluded to there is injuries for why you've picked someone for, for 19th. I've picked Brentford. Um, I think they, they shaved relegation last season. They were on a massive dip. Um, they have had a good start of the season. So, obviously, this is no reflection at the start of the season because if you're just looking at the league table now, you would never have them on, on relegation. But it's mm-hmm. Ivan Tony for me. Um, I think if he goes down injured or just suffers a little bit of bad form, I, I think they are a little bit reliant on his goals. That's not really a knock on them. Um, they play decent football, but so do a lot of the teams in the bottom six of the Premier League. Um, yeah. I, I, it could go either way. You know, I, I wouldn't, It wouldn't be a massive surprise if he stayed up. So... They had probably, it might even be at the end of the season, the result of the season when they got that 4-0 result against Man U. It shocked the whole Premier League. You know, 
yeah. people were, including myself, you get a notification on your phone that the three nil up. I have to put the match on. I have to see what is happening here because you cannot believe that this is going on. It was shocking at two nil. Then a third one went in. Then a fourth one went in. Um, I think that's probably just a shock fixture. I don't really think that shown of Brentford. I don't think they're going to pick up too many more results, shock results yeah. like that. I, I, I've got a lot of time for them. Um, I think they're boxing clever with what they've got. The manager's already said last season he's got one of the smallest wage bills in the entire league. I mean, that, that, if you, to stay up in the Premier League, you need money. You know, it's it's no coincidence or whatever. Um, but yeah, I've I've got them down, and the reason I've went for them really is just in case they get an injury because I do think they're heavily reliant on that one. Yeah. So, last of the relegated teams uh i'll go first this time then um yeah. it could have been anyone it could have been about three or four different teams like i've alluded to i'm gonna go for everton um possibly a massive shock because i know obviously a lot of people would just pick the three uh promoted teams that's an obvious choice everton flirted with relegation last season um almost down to the last game of the season um the sold with charleston um, and for me, again, transfer windows open. I know that I've seen the, the link to a few different players uh, that haven't replaced them yet. Um, it's about financial behind the scenes. Have they got the money to do it? I know they're battling with financial fair play. Um, Calvert Lewis is injured as well. Uh, he's had an injury last season, had an injury this season. If he gets another yeah, injury really you know, for any bit of time, I mean, I'm, they're relying on Richarlison, uh, not Richarlison, rather Rondon. And Rondon, for me, he was fantastic when he's up at Newcastle. He's he's had some great days um, in the Premier League, he's but for me, many. he's a, he's a championship player now. I think is yeah. he shouldn't really be getting into the first team. The fact that he is and they're relying on him, um, it's it's the goals really why I've I've picked Everton. I think they're really going to struggle. I, I've seen Anthony Gordon, obviously a sixty million pound player. Uh, he scored yesterday. Looks fantastic. Um, he looks like he could add goals to his game, but. I think up front is really going to be a struggle for Everton and, and they could get pipped. I'm sitting, you know, maybe they get 16th, 15th, whatever, but I, I've got a feeling maybe it'll be them this season just because they've let people go. They haven't replaced them. And, and the main star striker either. is a bit of an injury problem as well. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Um, my last relegation team, maybe a surprise, bit contradictory to what you were saying earlier about their transfer window, but I've gone for Nottingham Forest, yeah. finishing 18th. I think 19-20 signings, it's a bit much. Some could work, some may not. I do really like Nottingham Forest. I think they've got a really good stadium and a good fan base, similar to Newcastle Leeds, that will re- really build the atmosphere. You saw that against Spurs um, when Dean Henderson saved that penalty. They've had a good start to the season, beating West Ham, but I just think it's going to take time for a lot of these um, signings to set to settle in and gel and become a team. I like Lingard, I like Ludi, I like um, uh, Kuate, I think it is, of Palace, they've signed. But yeah, I think they're going to have problems. And yeah, I'm going to go for Forrest being the last team to get relegated. Yeah, so you don't think the gamble will pay off? Obviously, that gambler with, with huge, huge money. Yeah, I think it might work for some, but I think, think for most, I can't say it. No. Yeah. Okay. And then the the next position is the team that just avoided the drop. So for this one, I've gone Fulham. Um, mm-hmm. Now, again, none of these bottom six surprises that I keep saying is, is a surprise. They have had a good start to the, the Premier League. Uh, incredible draw with Liverpool. I mean, any newly promoted team that gets anything at Liverpool or Man City, it's, it's exceeding expectations. Uh, they did have a narrow defeat at Arsenal. Um, they've had a win over Brighton. Um, it's it's ex Newcastle player Mitro um, that seems to be getting the goals because obviously when it comes to relegation, goals are the thing that that's really going to keep you up. Yeah. Uh, there's doubts over him. He had a fantastic season last season in the Championship, breaking all sorts of records. Um, there was obviously doubts with him uh, whether he could do that in the Premier League. Uh, he seems at this stage, very early stage, he does seem like he's answering the critics uh, and he does look at this point like he could get the goals to keep them up. And if they do edge it, if they do pip it up, I really think it'll be down to to him. Yeah, 
Um, just to avoid the drop for me, I've gone for Everton. I think Lampard might be one of the first managers to get sacked this season. They haven't won a game yet, although they have made some good signings. I really like Onana in the field for Everton, but I just think they'll just about to avoid the drop because they do have some good players in their team, the likes of Pickford. Um, but yeah, I think Everton are going to struggle and they haven't had a great start to the season and their fixture list is looking horrible from now on. Yeah, well, they've got the derby uh, this just, weekend against Liverpool as well. So Yep, yeah, they've yeah. got the derby on Saturday and then after that they've Arsenal away. West Ham at home, Southampton away, Man United at home, and then Spurs away, and then yeah. Newcastle away. So it's not looking good for Everton. Um, I don't really look at any of their games and think they're going to win this. So mm-hmm. I think they'll just about avoid the drop there with some of the experienced players. Yeah, obviously we've seen one managerial candidate for the Premier League go. Are you expecting yeah. Lampard to be the, the one that goes? Or is there someone else that you think, expect maybe before? Lampard... Him? Oh, there's another English manager that could be going soon that's a wee bit higher up in the table I've got, but I'll speak about that in a couple of minutes. Yeah, okay, we'll leave that one in then. So, next place up, um, I've gone for a team that you had to, to be relegated, and that's Nottingham Forest. Um, yeah. Now, I'm saying this, you did mention probably the most, the most telling point is how fast can the team gel with a brand new team? Um, that's going to be the million dollar question and yeah. how fast are they going to get the results? Um, if, I mean, we haven't got time to go through all of the, the signings because that would be the full length of the video. Um, it's been absolutely crazy. There's probably likely to be a few more. Um, I know obviously we've seen a defender just sign um, for them earlier today. Um, for me, the signings that they're making, some of them are a little bit wasteful. Um, I think it's Bolly. Um, they're just getting 30. Mm-hmm. Most of them, I'm quite impressed with. Um, I'm quite impressed that they've got the pulling power to get them. Um, and I'll, I'll touch on a little bit. So if if we go through, we, they obviously signed Lingard, who for me is one of the, the biggest sort of signings that they could have made this yeah, season. He definitely. was well catered for. He could have had his pick, could have went in Newcastle, West Ham, Everton, yeah. um, loads of people. The fact that Nottingham Forest got him, even though it was on a questionable one-year contract, and is that going to be the best thing for Nottingham Forest at the end yeah, of the season? Quite a high way go to down. We'll, we'll see. But other than that, Dean Henderson, um, I know obviously I mentioned before, goals are, are the most important thing in the Premier League and staying up, but you know you, you, you need a solid defence. We've already seen Dean Henderson with some crucial pen saves. Um, you know, that, that's that's the same as a goal. Um, so he is on a man, he's a man on a mission rather. He's got the bit between his teeth. Um, obviously, he was a bit outspoken when he left Man U. So, You'd expect him to do quite well. Um, he has played for, I think, it was Sheffield United before, who were in a similar sort of position. Uh, played really well there. Um, but one of the things that really impresses me with Nottingham Forest is they're not just getting the older players who are mercenaries and kind of just going for a quick payday. Yep. They're getting a lot of good young players. So even if they good, do go yeah. down, yeah, even if they do go down, they've kind of got the structure there. Um the signings that they're making, the valuation for the young players are probably going to go up. But if they keep a hold of them, you'd imagine they'd go up. I mean, literally just listing a few. I know they obviously overpaid. We had it down as one of the, the worst signings uh, is Gibbs White. He's going to be a good player for their future. Um, if you can get past the price tag, he is going to be a good yeah. player. Obviously, they signed Williams from Liverpool, um, the fullback. Great. Uh, you know, I, I looked at that deal and I thought it would just be a loan deal. I thought player. that would have been a, a, a loan that would have benefited both parties. The fact that they've got him. And he's their player now. It was great. Um, the St. Richards from Bayern Munich. Um, the left back you mentioned as well. I watched the game yesterday. The highlights. He looks fantastic. Um, so I've just got them pipping everybody else to yeah. stay up. But again, they're kind of a, a question mark to see if yeah. it is because it's a big gamble. Yeah, I think with, with Forrest, a lot of their signings are actually really quality, like European standard signings. I mean, Ludi won, won the league with Atletico Madrid. Fowler was challenging for Champions League with um, Ad Atlanta in the Serie A last season. So, yeah, I just think they just need to get them to gel and um, play as a team. And they've got the fan base um, behind them who will support Steve Cooper. So, yeah, it could go either way with Forrest, but we'll see in that one. Um, and then above them, I'll I'll jump in because you've you've kind of already covered them as I've got Southampton. Extinct, yeah. Yeah, um, I've said this for the last few years that they'll go down, they'll go down, and 
kind of like what Sunderland used to do where they would just stay up and stay up and stay up and, and survive somehow. Um, I think that's probably going to be the case with Southampton. And I think they probably do have enough to stay up. Um, and I wouldn't surprise us if they did. So I've, I've put them for 15th. Um, I went for Fulham in 16th. I think that uh, Mitrovic's goals will help them out just to avoid the drop. I mean, they've made some great summer signings. Andreas Pereira from United, Leno and Nets. They've already proved this season they can win at home. They've beat Brighton, Brentford. They've drew with Liverpool at home as well. So I think um, they'll just about avoid the drop. And I like Marco Silva. I think he's a good manager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, above that one, I've got Leeds. Um, now, Leeds, honestly, would not surprise me if they finished 10th, 12th, 15th, 18th. Uh, uh, there's a lot of question marks. Obviously, the manager... Uh, he did have half a season last season. It looked like they were going to go down, kind of like Everton um, at one stage last season. Um, they've sold their best players. Uh, Rafinha, literally their star man. He was so good. Um, I don't think they've replaced him with anyone as good. Um, likewise, even though now it's kind of forgotten about the the whole Calvin Phillips, uh, the fact that he's left, he's a bench player now, but he was their yeah. star <laughs> player. So they've lost... Arguably, I know Bamford's quite good for them, um, bags a few goals, but they've lost their two best players. And I think really if any mid-table team or lower Premier League team that loses their best two-star players, there's always going to be question marks uh, to see how they do. I've kind of got them where I have, but they could finish 12th, 15th, 16th, anywhere for me. Yeah, um, I've gone for Leicester City in 15th. Um I think Leicester are in trouble this season. They've, they haven't made really any significant signings. The, the Fafana loss is going to hit them. It looks like the likes of Tillemans and Madison are heading out the door, whether it be in January or next season. They've got quite an aging squad. They've just um, offered Vardy a new contract at 35. I don't know about Leicester. I think they could be in trouble. I think their only real hope is their manager because I like Brendan Rodgers. I think he's a good manager. He's done well in the past. But yeah, it's... We'll see what ha- what happens with them. They haven't had a great start to the season either. But yeah, Leicester, I don't think will be as good as they have been in past seasons. This season, no. um, they're they're my next one up. So uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they seem to me chaos is probably a little bit too far. But they they seem in a little bit of of chaos at the moment. I mean, there's there seems to be fires all over the place. Like you mentioned, Vardy's just been offered a new contract. Is that kind of out of loyalty because of what he's done for them? It, sure. Can he really... I think he's coming up to 36. I think it's in January when he's 36. There's not many players. You've got Cristiano Ronaldo as maybe the exception and, and occasional Ryan Giggs, someone like that. But really at 36, playing in the Premier League, especially up top, can he can he beat the defenders at, at that sort of age? I don't know. The, for me, that was a bit of a questionable decision um, not saying it's a wrong decision because obviously everything he's done for them but it's not a ruthless decision that maybe you kind of expect Premier League managers to make um, other than that you've got Tillemans now he's pretty much running his contract out he's been offered contract after contract rejected yeah. it and rejected it he is one of their star players um, so it's either he leaves in this last few hours we'll be keeping an eye seeing if, if there's an update yeah. with that. If he does, they haven't really got any time to replace him. Are they going to cash in now? He's going to be, you know, when it comes around to January. Million, I heard. Yeah, yeah. I mean... Which is very low for Telemans. It's a it's a bargain, and it's it's purely because yeah. he wants out, I think. I think he's made it clear. Everyone knows he wants out. It's well publicised. Um, but, I mean, when when he goes, is that really showing the club that the ambition's on the way up? Um, you've got Madison. Now, I know they rejected a few offers for Madison, uh, from Newcastle and a few others. Um, mm-hmm. The let Michael go. Um, yeah, he's a big player as well. He would have been good in the dressing room, plenty of experience behind them as well. And their mm-hmm. goalkeepers at the minute are not looking good. I think they've got no. Danny Ward, ex-Liverpool player. Yeah, and I mean, they, they kind of let Michael go for, for almost nothing sort of thing. So they, they've... Yeah, I know what you're saying about Danny Ward. He's, he's okay, but it's, he's a downgrade, really. If we're being if we're being brutally yeah. honest, he's not at the yeah. level of Schmeichel. So it, they've, they've kind of weakened that position bizarrely for some reason. For Fauna, obviously, he's just left. Um, seventy five million to spend. Big but, money. Yeah, but only, only thirty six hours or something to spend it. Whatever it is, is that yeah. going to be a dagger in the in their season? Looking back at it, um, 
I mean, mm -hmm. this this will change what I'm saying here, but as of recording, there's there's not really any noticeable signings. I know that they have to spend it. Surely they can't sit on that money. Um, yeah. It'll be so detrimental to the club. Um, I they think, might need a big January transfer window. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. But might the damage already be done there in terms of you know dropping too many points? Possibly. Um, we mentioned before about manager Sackens. Now, Brendan Rodgers, I don't know if it's a case of he might get sacked or if he might leave because he can't be happy with what he's seeing. I think when he joined no. Leicester, there was a lot of ambition, a lot of star players. They were only going one way. And now, recently, I don't know what's changed, there just seems to be a, a decline in interest, ambition, whatever you want to call it. it it's It doesn't seem promising. And I think maybe he'll get a bit sick of that and maybe get a, a top job if, if a top job comes. Um, yeah. or, or maybe he will get sacked because... We've seen it before. Premier League clubs' expectations are unrealistic sometimes, and maybe they are expecting a, a, a top seven, top eight, even though they're downgrading the squad. I, I don't know. What, what do you think on that? Or, or who do you have as, as maybe a manager who might leave? I don't know. See, the thing about Leicester, they have the players to challenge for, for top 10, even European. It's, I don't know what's happened with them this season. I mean, they're sitting bottom of the league on one point. Vardy, Ian Achu, I mean, the only real talent, the likes of Harvey Barnes, Drewsbury Hall have got as well. I think their defence is, isn't the best either, but they have got quite unlucky with injuries. So we'll see what happens with that one. Yeah. OK, so next up, who have you got finished above Leicester? I've got, is it 14th we're on to now? 14th, yeah. I've got Aston Villa finishing in 14th. So I think with Aston Villa, it's a bit of a weird one. They have the players to challenge for Europa League. Mm -hmm. They have the quality in their team. But I think they're in for a very hard season. I've been seeing on Twitter the fans are slowly starting to turn against Gerrard for recent results, even though some of the signings he's brought in, the likes of Kamara, Carlos, even Coutinho we saw come in. I don't think any other manager would be able to bring in that, that calibre of player in the Aston Villa. But yeah, I think they're in for a hard season. They need Watkins and Danny Ings to start firing, but we'll see. Jarrod could be another manager to um, get sacked. I, ha I have got that down because purely because the, 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 the thing I'm factoring in with that is on paper, that squad is so good and he should be getting more of a tune out of, out of them players. I mean, for me, other than the top six, they've probably got the best substitute striker in Danny Ings, he's fantastic. And the, the bench is great. Uh, he, I think everyone knows he should be doing better. Mm -hmm. yep, yep, agreed. Um, next up, I have Brentford in yep. 13th. I think, yeah, I agree with some of the points you were saying that um, this could be a sort of the season where they go down. But I think that result against Man United is a big one um, at home, 4-0. They've got some really good players in Tony and Bueno. They've got Ben Mee from um, Burnley on a free transfer, I think it was. And I really like their manager, Thomas Frank. And sort of similar to the likes of Newcastle, Leeds, Forest, they've got a good atmosphere um, at home. And yeah, I think they'll have enough to stay up this season. Yeah. So for me, I've got Wolves. Ooh. So this is again another one where I feel they could be placed almost anywhere this season. Um, they're kind of like Everton. Um the star man that they've got up front does seem to pick up a lot of injuries. Um, as soon as he drops with an injury, their form is shocking. Um, they, they rely on his goals so much. They don't seem to have a replacement for that uh, contingency plan. Um, I'm unsure where they might finish. They, it wouldn't surprise me if everyone stayed fit and they sneak the top 10 finish. Um, mm -hmm. But I, that's where I've got them. I've lead in 12th. I agree with what you said about um, Rafinha and Phelps, but I think they've replaced them well and they've made some good signings from the Red Bull club, the likes of Aronson, Adams, Christensen, Rodrigo's firing at the start of the season. Really good home fans and I really like Jesse March um, as a manager. So I think Leeds will be fine this season. We've already seen um, the 3-0 against Chelsea, uh, what they're capable of. So I have Wolves at 11th. I think they've made some really good signings in Guedes, Neto, ne um, 
Nunez, sorry, as well. Even though they have had a slow start of the season, I think the likes of Neves in midfield, Matinho, Neto, you know, will really help them this season. So, yeah, Wolves, I think, will they need to pick up, but I think they will. Yeah. Uh, my 11th, I've obviously got the, the last team remaining. I've gone for Aston Villa. Um, mm-hmm. Obviously, we mentioned it before about Gerard. Um, for for me, though, what I can foresee happening is I can see him leaving. I can, I can honestly see him being one of the first managers to let go. I just think the board are going to have higher expectations than what he's delivering at the moment. And how long can they let that keep going on? I do feel if they fetch a different manager in, he could be getting more of a tune out of these players. I, I look at Gerard, and he doesn't seem to know his, his best start in eleven. He's he's fidgeting around a yeah. lot with different stuff, um, which is what you've got to do when you're in that position and you're losing matches and stuff. But I think if it was maybe a Wolves a lead, something like that would be a problem. But given the the money that Aston Villa have spent and the quality of that squad, I think he should be doing better. And I think. If they do let him go, or if he does turn things around, I really think they'll be one of the best of the the rest of the, the bottom team sort of thing. Um, they've got goals, mm-hmm. they've got strikers to get them goals, they've got a solid defence, they've yeah. got a, a brilliant midfield. The, on paper, even the, the goalkeeper... The, um, on paper, they should be finishing much higher than yeah. even 11th. They should be up for challenging West Ham and Newcastle for 6th and 7th, which I, they, they might end up doing at the end, but it's just, it just doesn't seem like... Gerard knows, as you said, what his correct team is. And yeah, I think they could be in for a hard season. Yeah, I fully agree. So we can see there, we agree with kind of mostly all of the same things there. There's yeah. a few differences. We do want to know, anyone who's watching, we want to know what you would do. We want to know your winners, your top four, your relegation, everything like that. Do you agree with what we're saying? Disagree? Let us know in the comments. Uh, If you did like that content, don't forget to like, follow and subscribe and stay tuned for more content like this throughout the season and beyond.